space in 2010. Here's the baby. Look at it. She's beautiful. All right. There's a few things you have to know about this. First of all, um, this is pretty much how it goes up. Actually, some of the bits are coated over for protection, so they strip that off and they strip off some of the wire and it's just testing, but it pretty much goes up. There's no shields or anything like that. The other thing that's odd is it's actually upside down. That is space, and the roof is where the earth would be. Now, in terms of the instruments, up here, behind this very fetching orange, is a visible camera in the sense that it records the images just like the human eye does. In this one here, you've got infrared. Now this, this, this is the important one. This is what gives us temperature. This is a microwave sounding unit, which kind of acts like a microwave oven, but in reverse. Instead of emitting microwaves, it receives and records microwaves. And depending on the amount of microwave radiation it receives, that gives us an idea about temperature. With global coverage and high-tech instruments, satellites seemed like a much better way of measuring global temperatures than thermometers. And in the early 90s, scientists put together the satellite data. What they found rocked the entire global warming community. The satellites showed that the Earth wasn't warming. In fact, it was slightly cooling. One of the scientists who performed the calculations was Dr. Roy Spencer. When we first did the satellite monitoring and got 10 years of data worth, it did show a slight cooling, which was a surprise to us. This result was in stark contrast to what other scientists had been saying. The rate of warming in the past 25 years is the highest on the record. It was about this time that Jim Hansen was talking about, you know, catastrophic global warming or potentially catastrophic global warming. And here we had the satellites telling us, well, it's been cooling for 10 years. It was a huge victory for the skeptics. And it soon became a key piece of evidence against global warming. As this documentary from 1990 shows. New data from space has made the land record more doubtful. Until recently, we've had no alternative but to rely on thermometers and weather balloons. But now, for the first time, satellites are giving us another source of information. We've found that we can monitor globally averaged atmospheric temperatures with a high level of precision, even on a monthly basis. Over the last 10 years, the thermometer record has shown an underlying upward trend. But according to the satellite information, the Earth was rather warmer in the first half of the 80s and rather cooler in the second half. Wow. Well, that's a pretty striking difference. I mean, you could see why the climate sceptics were delighted when they got hold of the, the satellite data, because you've got the red line showing the thermometer data, and it's clearly going up. And then you've got the blue line showing the satellite data with no sign of warming at all. The question is, which one of those is right? Is it the humble thermometer, or is it the high-tech satellite? It's a classic scientific problem. You've got two different sets of data which are saying conflicting things. And the one thing that science tells us is that there's going to be a showdown. And only one set of data is going to be left standing. First on the attack were the sceptics. They said there was one very obvious flaw in the data from the thermometers. They had ignored human progress. Las Vegas. Mm. Las Vegas. Like it or not, it's one of the 20th century's greatest achievements. They don't do that in Glasgow. And this is where Britney get married. 
for 55 hours. <laughs> this is the perfect place to test out a phenomenon which became central to the skeptic's case against the thermometer record. The thing is, I'm not really here to have fun. I'm actually here to measure temperature, which according to this thermometer, even though it's late at night, is 22 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. It's Vegas, baby. So it's hot. It's hot all the time. <laughs> but the significant thing is, drive out of the city and into the desert proper, and the temperature drops. Well, now we're, um, I don't know where we are actually, it's the middle of nowhere, but we're outside the city limits and I've got my thermometer and it's reading, well, it's reading about 18 degrees C, so much cooler than it was in there. And the reason's simple, all that concrete, all those roads and cars, all the stuff that you get in modern cities, absorb the heat of the day and then they release it at night. And those tall buildings, they trap the warm air that would otherwise blow away. It's the same story all over the world. Cities are heat traps. It's called the urban heat island effect. And that effect, said the skeptics, had created the false impression of a warming planet. Take what happened to the Las Vegas weather station. It was built in 1942 out in the desert, next to the local airstrip. But then Las Vegas grew. It's America's fastest growing city. Its population has tripled in just 30 years. The weather station's still at the airport. You can see it just over here, behind this fence. Las Vegas airport has been gradually swallowed up by the city. Over the back there, you can see the famous Las Vegas Strip. So we are in the middle of the city, and that means we're in the middle of the urban heat island. And that means it's much hotter here than it would be naturally. Sure enough, this weather station has shown a four degree warming over the past 50 years. Whereas a nearby desert station shows a warming of less than one degree. So the skeptic said, yeah, sure. All around the world, the weather stations are recording ever increasing temperatures. But that's because of the growth of cities. The planet, that's not getting warmer at all. If they were right, the thermometer record was indeed faulty and global warming was a false alarm. But there was a counter-argument. It wasn't only cities that were heating up. All across the globe, there was evidence that the world was warming. In the countryside, spring was coming earlier. In the mountains, glaciers were retreating further than they had for centuries. So much so that all sorts of things were melting out of the ice, including a human body frozen 5,000 years before. Ötzi, the ice man. Even the oceans were warming. Not a lot of urban development there. All these things seemed to back up the thermometer record not the satellites. It was deadlock. One side had to be wrong. But it wasn't clear which one. Finally, after almost 10 years of poring over the data, someone did find a fault. And it was with the data from the satellites.